Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Uncharted 1 Crushing Difficulty walkthrough, and this is chapter 4, also known as Plane Wrecked. And this is the chapter where you're gonna find out if you have what it takes to beat this game on Crushing, because in my opinion, this is the absolutely hardest chapter in the whole series, actually. As you can see, it is a quite long video, it is a very long chapter, and uh, <laughs> to be truthful, it took me a very long time to record. Because this video is just about 32 minutes, and I spent maybe two hours on this chapter alone. And that is because there are a <laughs> they are there are a bunch of huge fights, was what I was gonna say. And we are gonna kick off the party very soon. As soon as I can get up this hill and across to the other side, we are gonna have our first taste of combat. So I'm gonna jump over here and run over this log. And conveniently there is a big rock over there. And we are gonna use that to our advantage. So as soon as you get over here, bring out your gun and try to spawn kill these guys if you can. At least try to soften them up while he's climbing down. And none of these guys will try to cross the log, but they will try to get out to the side to f get behind, kill you behind cover. But they go down pretty fast, and we take down the last one. And something you should know before you climb the vine to get up to the upper area, there is one guy standing up there waiting for you. And on my first attempt at this fight, I ran straight into him and he gunned me down so quick it wasn't even funny. <laughs> but we take him down, we do a little knockdown combo, and we also get to pick up some grenades, which I'm gonna use later in this chapter. And one aspect that makes this chapter so hard, or that makes the fight so hard, is that there are some very weird mid-battle checkpoints. You will actually see me die in uh, one instant of this, uh, in one of the big battles, because the checkpoint was placed so weird so I couldn't edit it out, so it would make a somewhat fluent video. But the hand grenades in this game, I mentioned them in a previous video and that the fact that they aren't very good. They have a very small blast radius and enemies are very good at dodging them. So I mainly use them as a sort of distraction. But sometimes you get lucky and you manage to kill someone with them. <laughs> and this is the fight where you're actually gonna see me die. It uh, happens a bit into the fight, but you'll see it when we get there. And what I like to do in this fight is hide behind this rock, because you get some time to react when enemies try to rush you because a lot of them will try to rush you in this fight, or in all the fights of this game. But if you stand back here, you have, you have a pretty good position to cover your flanks. They will have a hard time getting close to you. And don't be afraid to spray and pray at times. <laughs> when they get too close, just mow them down. And always stay aggressive. Try to use the cover, use the cover trick when you can. And whenever someone gets close, you're gonna have to let some of them come close to you so you can pick up their ammo without getting your head blown off. But I think he is the last guy from at least the first wave. You go into a little cooldown period and there's one guy left up there on uh, the edge. No, it's actually the second spawn even. So one of them jumps down, one always stays up there on uh, the little ledge. And you can see I'm in quite a bad spot right now. So I throw in a grenade, see if it can save me or at least get their attention for a few seconds so I can once again fall back to this giant rock. And in some of these fights, sadly, you're gonna have to try and go for headshots. <laughs> because you won't always be uh, in a position that you can run up and grab ammo. So either you go for the headshot to conserve your ammo or you try to let at least one or two of them get really close. 
And one thing I need to talk about while we're in this little fight is that when you're in an action sequence, when you're in a fight, you're gonna hear some dramatic music. And when the fight is over, that music is supposed to die down and everything becomes quiet again. And that works well in all the games in the series, except for this one. Here in the first one, the music has a tendency to stop, you think you're safe, and then you realize there's one or two guys left. And now you'll see me die, because you have just reached a checkpoint after wave 2, and we're going into wave 3. So I try to run back, and I die. And this is where the game spawns you in, in the middle of everything. And all the explosive barrels re respawn after a checkpoint. And you can see I'm very close. This is just me in desperation mode right now. I had no plan for this. I was just improvising and saying a silent prayer to anyone who was willing to listen. But sometimes this works. I got amazingly lucky here. I actually only had to do maybe four or five tries at this fight or at least at the first wave and on this second wave I did try some different techniques and uh, try to go for different parts of uh, the geography to see what cover worked best but most of the times I couldn't fall back to that giant rock I used at the beginning of the fight. So. I wish you the best of luck, sadly I don't have a better strategy for the last wave of this fight. If you can, try to fall back to that big rock in the background, where I spent most of the fight at least. And hopefully you'll get there and it will work better for you. And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, if uh, you have, a, for example, an AK and you pick up more ammunition for it, you'll get between 10 and 15 bullets but if you pick up another weapon in between you will get around 36 bullets if you pick up an AK again so if that's your weapon of choice try to pick up another weapon in between after a fight so you'll get extra ammo but since we survived that fight we are going on to the next gauntlet <laughs> they're really close together in this chapter it's just Big fight after big fight. So you get this little chance to pick up some more grenades and some more ammo. And the next bunch of enemies are gonna spawn as soon as you get through this door. So we kick it down and some guys jump in from the left. And this is a great position to hold this gate. Because you can bottleneck them, it's quite hard for them to flank you. A lot of them will try to get over here. There are some guys coming from the left, and there are also guys coming from the right, so you're gonna have to cover both sides. They come from that little alleyway corridor thing there. And I try to run in a little bit and try to force the next spawn while I'm still in a position of power. And going back here can be a bit dangerous, because you can see I went a little bit too far back, and one of the, one of the guys tried managed to surprise me even didn't try to surprise me managed to surprise me but since he his aim was a bit off and he wasn't that aggressive i managed to take him down and <laughs> another guy does the same thing <laughs> i was so not prepared for that but i'm getting lucky today i think i even did a headshot on that guy sometimes you get really lucky that is the joy of video games. And now I know no more guys are gonna try and rush me because there can't be that any many enemies left. So now I feel that I am in the position of power that I want. I can use this gate to my to as an advantage. They will not be able to uh, rush me and I can just pick my shots. And we managed to take down these guys you're gonna head into the next room and you're gonna trigger yet another spawn. And that is the problem I have with this game, that some of the fights go on forever. And I mean literally forever. 
it's like where do you get all these enemies do you go to like bad guys or us do they have like buy 10 get 5 mercenaries for free because there are so many enemies and yeah it just goes on forever but now I'm starting to get a bit impatient so I'm gonna try and advance on these guys be a bit more aggressive and you see there another guy yet another spawn and I think there is even one more spawn after this guy because when you go in through that door over there you're gonna go into a little open area and there's gonna be even more enemies they're everywhere <laughs> they're like crabs after a weekend of binge drinking and sleeping around <laughs> but managed to take him down never get ahead of yourself always stay back pick your shots be aggressive when you can and as soon as you go in for that door you will trigger that spawn and I fall back here once again try to bottleneck them at the door use this obelisk or uh, big temple pillar thingamabob to stay behind and be safe it's like pick him down with a headshot like a boss because that's how Nathan Drake rolls <laughs> And as I mentioned before, you only take four bullets from a handgun before you go down. And I think I got hit three times there. That is one of those moments where they can breathe at you with garlic breath <laughs> and you will die. Because you have nothing left to put up. And I don't know how it works with the health, re health regain in this game. I'm not quite sure because it feels like sometimes it goes up really fast and sometimes it takes forever before your health respawns or recharges. It's maybe a more correct term. And I think it might have something to do with if you're being aggressive or not. That if you use the more passive approach and you just hang back it will take longer for your health to re recharge or... I'm not quite sure. If anyone out there knows, please let me know in the comments. It would be awesome to get that input from you because uh, I haven't started recording the next game in the series yet. I'm almost done editing Uncharted 1 and as soon as that is done I'm gonna start with it. But it would be quite fun to know before I start that game. But something I need to tell you which is some bad news unfortunately the fights we have been through right now are quite hard as you can see they are beast like at times especially the one before this but the hardest fight is yet to come there is one gigantic fight that just that is one of those moments I think there are four or five waves of enemies and right here when you get close to this wall you spawn in some enemies and there are two guys right there or three even and there are some more guys spawning in from the right so what I like to do I like to go back to this little rock ledge and hang from it because I'm quite safe back here I try to blind fire get one of them to sidestep but here I'm quite hard to hit. I'm a very small target even though they have godlike aiming. It's quite hard for them to get a clear shot at me and I use that. Always try to use all the perks you can find in geography and most of them won't try to charge in that far. If you stand over here by the wall they will try to rush you but they never go for that ledge in my experience at least. I'm not gonna say it's an absolute truth, so <laughs> you don't end up saying there, Oh, you lying bastard, Wolfman. They rushed me. But in my experience, they have never gone over to that ledge. You can get, get unlucky that they may throw a grenade or something, and then you're pretty much fucked. <laughs> but then you just try again. And once again, of course, as always, loot through all the bodies always pick up ammo when you can 
I was hoping that I hadn't picked that AK up before so I would get some extra ammo. And here comes a sequence that, that is a bit trolly. Because when you get up to a platform over here, it's gonna spawn in two enemies on top of uh, the waterfall. And this is one of those really unfair moments. Because at one time, they're gonna spawn right up there on the cliff. Right, right on the right side of the waterfall. See them? It happened to me a bunch of times that you just saw me climb up on the, the cliff. I immediately backstepped, jumped down, hang from ledge. I think it took me 10 or 12 tries and so many times they murked me before I could even turn around. And that is the weird part about crushing. That's why I'm not 100% sure that it always takes 4 bullets to take you down. Unless they manage to squeeze off two perfect shots each. Which definitely isn't impossible on crushing because sometimes they are, abs or most of the time, they are absolute beasts. And there's gonna come one more guy when we come over from this platform. But <coughs> E3 is coming up. The big gaming convention of the year and hopefully we're gonna get some more information about The Last of Us 2. That's something I'm really looking forward to and that is also something I will be covering on my channel as soon as that game comes out. I think I'm actually gonna take a few days off work when it's released and uh, first of all go through the game like a uh, flamethrower through a snowflake and uh, then I'm gonna start recording a walkthrough for it. And hopefully have it up just three or four days after release. And also this uh, late summer, in on the 23rd of August, they will be releasing Uncharted Lost Legacy. There is also another game I'm looking forward to and it's also a game I'm planning to cover. When uh, that game is released I'm actually gonna take a break from uh, the regular Uncharted series to uh, put up a walkthrough as fast as possible because I know that most of the games I'm, uh, I have covered on my channel aren't the most up to date and uh, that will change. The reason for this is just the fact that there aren't any games released right now that I'm interested in playing. Because I promised myself when I started this channel a few months back that I'm only gonna cover games that I want to play. Or at least, for sorry, if the channel grows, that may change. I may play almost every game that is released. But for now, it's a hobby project. I do it because I think it's very fun. And uh, I love all aspects of it the recording and the editing. Still having problems with the narrating at times, but it's one of those things that gets better over time. Because it is the hardest part, I don't write a script or something before. If uh, I come up with something special I want to talk about, I may make a few notes before I start narrating. But most of this is just improvisation on my part. And yeah. <laughs> It's mostly improvised, that's what I was gonna say. Oh, and I always do the commentary in one take. And that was the worst transition in the history of mankind. And I'm gonna tell you why it's such a horrible transition. Because I am just on the downside of that cliff. The cliff I came up. Because I tried doing this first part of the fight standing up on the cliff. And it didn't work. And at one time I fell down and ended up here and apparently there is a checkpoint when you jump down. So that's why there is some choppy editing there. I apologize but there was nothing I could do. I tried uh, editing it so you would see me jump down but it didn't look very good so I thought I'd just... I'll do it a bit choppy and 
I'll explain it when I get here. And also in my previous video I mentioned those walls that are made of uh, rocks stacked at each other. I don't know if there is a word for it in English, I don't know what it's called. But those are quite bad to hide behind because as you can see if someone throws a grenade or if someone shoots at it enough it will fall apart and you will be completely exposed. So always be wary if you hide behind those, but that goes both ways of course. If an enemy hides behind it, throw in a grenade, watch the cover go up in smoke and see his panic the second before you send him right into the next world. And this is the hardest fight in the chapter and in the entire game. Because there are way too many enemies and there are way too many waves. I would say because this is wave number 1.5 <laughs> because there is the first wave the enemies that are here when you jump down and then those guys decide to join the party and when you've taken them down run around and gather up some as much ammo as you can because we uh, still have at least two waves to take down yeah here we have wave number two or actually free. So there are a total of five waves of enemies I think. Five waves. There's like 50, 60 people or something. <laughs> or at least it feels like it. And that is some poor game design I think because it is an action game. It's supposed to be action-packed but you don't have to go completely overboard with it. But as I said, if you manage to beat this chapter, you have the skills to beat the entire game. And I think it's good in a sense that this chapter is so hard because it is one of the first ones. It makes you hone your skill immediately. You can't because some games are very easy all the way up until the end and then suddenly everything becomes extremely hard. But here you have to go through a baptism by fire immediately. And this wave of enemies, they spawn in as soon as you come down from the airplane. You saw me running down, throwing in a grenade. That is very good. Try to be extremely aggressive because you can spawn kill most of these guys. You see, one of them went down as soon as he came down due to my awesomely placed grenade. And the rest of them didn't make it very far from the checkpoint. Now there are just three guys left and one of them is a shotgunner. And shotgunners should never be a priority unless they get close. Wow. That's some piss poor blind firing. <laughs> because shotgunners are of course extremely deadly when they get close. But they have such a wide spread on the shotgun. So if you manage to get them to stay back, they will not make or they will not do so much damage on you. And also that works for you as well, of course. This game is very consistent in that sense, and that's something I really like. And since I picked up a shotgun, I get 32 bullets when I pick up the AK. And this is also a bit of a weird check, weird editing on my behalf. Because this last wave doesn't actually spawn in until you reach that platform you see in front of me. But when they spawn in, what you want to do is fall back to this area. Because these guys also love to rush you, as everyone does in this entire game. But here is your place of power. They will have a very hard time to get close to you, you can see them a mile off. And you can always check your flanks, they will have a very hard time flanking you. And you see? One guy with a shotgun, the gay, and <laughs> and the gay, and one gay with an and one guy with an AK. <laughs> so the first thing we do, we go for the guy with the AK. And now we have just a shotgunner left, so I know I can take my time, place my shot, take him down with a quick shot to the head. And now I think he is the very last guy before we can move on.
And you can see the fights aren't that long, actually. You don't spend very much time in each gauntlet, but when you're in it, it feels like forever. And it takes you so long, or it can take you so many tries to complete it. First time I played this game on Crushing, I almost gave up on this on this chapter, on this fight, actually. Because I got so frustrated because uh, if you die before that last wave, we saw a little choppy transition, right where I'm standing about now, that is where the game spawns you in. And that is very close to where the enemies spawn in. <laughs> and they spawn in like a half second after you do. And that is not very fun if you're not prepared for it. And you can see that guy there went into a big trap. That is something that's gonna be a factor in the next fight. Which is actually I think the last fight of this chapter. Because in this fight there are a bunch of those traps that are scattered across the area where you do the combat. If you accidentally trigger one, I think if you press circle oh very fast, Nate will dodge away from it. And if you don't press circle, you will die. Instantly. But we start here by choking out this guy, or breaking his neck. And we take down his little friend that's leaning against this old brick wall. Very quick, very effective, and then we go for this guy, because he has a grenade launcher. So, quick headshot, there is a guy just behind the wall. I tried taking him out before I went for the grenade launcher guy. But, didn't get a consistent strategy to do it. But, the grenade launcher guy should be your first priority. Always, because it is a power weapon. It has quite a brutal blast. So if you're just an inch too close to it, it will insta-kill you. And don't take that left, because you saw there was a trap right there. And as soon as you take down these guys that try to rush you, there will be another spawn of enemies down at the other side of this of that wall where the grenade launcher guy was sitting. So we murk these guys down, or apparently kick him in nuts. Doesn't seem like a very decent way to take someone out. <laughs> because all guys know how much it hurts to get a kick in the nuts. So even in a situation where a lot may depend on it, you still think twice before you do it to someone else. Because all your manlyhood goes and we all know it's just complete lockdown. But now we get up here, I hide behind this little wall, and I'm gonna try to spawn kill as many of these guys as I can. And the explosions will also trigger the traps if they get too close. And if you're lucky, the blast may not take them out, but at least the trap will, if you're lucky. And after all the checkpoints, that is something that is a bit weird in this game. If uh, you trigger a checkpoint and you die, and then the explosive barrels will respawn. And this is consistent. So that is something you can use to your advantage if uh, you feel the need for it. Use the barrels in one of the earlier waves. And when you're confident that you've reached a checkpoint, just let the enemies kill you and use them again. And that is not the most heroic thing to do, but when you're, play when you're playing a game on an extreme difficulty, you're allowed to use the little perks that sloppy programmers have given you. <laughs> but I think that's the last of them. I can hear the music hasn't quite died down, so I'm being a bit cautious. Because I'm not entirely sure. Now the music stopped. And you can see, now it starts again, and there's... Three more guys spawning in. There is yet another wave. <laughs> and we have one shotgunner, two guys with AKs. And the shotgunner is come is getting too close for comfort, so now he is priority number one. 
And apparently my blind fire didn't want to cooperate, so I'm gonna pop my head out, take a risk, try to get him down. And this is one of those hairy moments. <laughs> Once again, very close to death. I don't remember me having so much trouble on these last guys. But they are very good at throwing grenades. Not as b good as in the later games. I think especially in uh, Uncharted 2, the grenade throwers have crazy range. I think when I played that game last, one of them, he threw <laughs> a grenade at me from half across the chapter. I don't think we were even in the same area code and he managed to get it to land right next to my feet. I just thought to myself, you should be a professional baseball player or something. <laughs> Why are you working as a mercenary? You probably make more money in sports. But at least this is the last guy. So I'm gonna try to take him out as fast as I can. I'm being very cautious right now because it has been quite a long fight. I had to do some try. I didn't ma make any of this in the first try. Actually, it took me a few tries to get through this. But now I'm just gonna run around, pick up some ammo, see if I can find anything useful and stay away from all the traps that haven't been set off. Because it would be so irritating to die right now because I don't know if there is a checkpoint after the fight I'm staying well away from that one but I wish you the best of luck with this chapter hopefully this will help you but I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in my next video so until next time this is the wolfman signing off